And now, the author's note. And the end of all things from The Last Boy on Earth. So why did I write this book? Well, I had a nightmare as a child. I grew up less than 10 miles from Loring Air Force Base in a town called Caribou, Maine. The Cold War was at its height. Every day, B-52 bombers would fly overhead, rumbling the air and shaking the walls, because inside the belly of each of these airborne behemoths were nuclear bombs that could rain destruction upon an enemy of the United States, namely the Soviet Union. And like so many people in my generation, I didn't believe in the future. We weren't going to have one. And we certainly weren't going to have the future that inevitably has become today. The future I believed in was a post-apocalyptic wasteland with radioactive ash falling from the sky like rain, sealing the fate of those poor wretches unlucky enough to survive the end of all things. I had dreams of Soviet warheads screaming as they fell from the sky, and in a flash of light, before any sound, all I knew would be erased from creation. The schools had stopped doing their air raid drills by then, either because they didn't want to scare us or because they thought, what's the use? In the end, huddling under a desk or lying in a ditch wasn't going to make any difference. We were all going to die. My nightmare wasn't something that my mind concocted while I slept. It was the waking dream we all had. It was an accepted state of madness. Mutually assured destruction. I've taught for over... Well, now, over 35 years, and I'm thankful that none of my students really comprehend the mindset that I had like I did, even though the threat is still as real today as it's ever been. Great powers have fallen, and we make progress in the area of arms reduction, but we still have enough nuclear powers aimed at each other to destroy the planet many times over. As a boy, I created a fantasy to help me deal with the intensely depressing prospects I held for my future and that of my species, and I imagined that somehow I would survive. I wasn't quite sure how this would happen, and in my adolescent mind, it didn't matter. I mean, heck, I wanted to live. I imagined that although almost everyone else had died, I made it. I would be sad, to be sure, but time would pass, and I would have to survive somehow. And being a real fan of the movie and book My Side of the Mountain by Gene Craighead George, and having seen The Omega Man at least three times at the Polaris Drive-In in Caribou, I knew people with enough ingenuity could survive just about anything. If Charlton Heston could survive a vampire plague, and if a lonely boy could live in a hollow tree, well, I could make a life in the ruins of the world. I'd have absolutely everything at my disposal anyway, all the things of the earth, all the supplies, the tools, the weapons, the toys, everything that was left over from the fall would be mine. I could do anything I wanted because peer pressure would have been blessedly eliminated. It would be lonely, but very, very busy, surviving. And then, after all of the time and effort spent staying alive in a world that needed rebuilding, I would miraculously discover that the cutest girl in the school, who shall remain nameless, had somehow survived as well. Life held promise. Like the last item in the bottom of Pandora's box, that fantasy gave me a little bit of hope. And But I grew up, and the world, it seems, didn't end. So what? That's a good thing. But the fantasy never quite went away. It lingered there in the corner of my mind, and every once in a while, before falling asleep, I would check in on that young teenage boy and see how he was faring in that alternate universe that my imagination had created. Just to let you know, by the way, he's doing pretty well. He's older, he has a family, other survivors of the Holocaust have gathered, and they make small but growing communities. Sometimes the sun even comes out from behind the nuclear winter sky. So I wrote this book. It's a little bit like my own fantasy, but the characters are certainly different. Brady and Kaylee are based on two real people, students of mine once upon a time. They've grown into two remarkable people, and this book was a way for me to do two things to think through the scenario of surviving in a near-empty world and hold on to that part of my two young friends that I knew them as then when they were young before they grew into responsible and no doubt very busy adults. They're not the same as the characters anyway. Those two characters have taken on a life of their own in whatever universe they reside in. In the book, I talk about the quantum theory of fiction, 
which is my own rather innocent way of trying to prove that all fiction, all of it, is somehow real. All fiction is real, and all reality is someone's imagination. Think about it. Every time you write anything down, or even dream it, it's a reflection of one of the infinitely possible universes that already exist out there, somewhere. Maybe books are the only way we'll ever be able to visit these other places, these other real places. I tend to think that's the truth. It works for me. In this world, as in the imagined world of the abandonment, imagination is a force to be reckoned with. And uh, like electricity, magnetism, atomic forces, or gravity, you can't ignore it. In this world, young women can wade into the river Styx and return unscathed, and young men can tackle demons, and with a little perseverance they can beat the tar out of them, or vice versa. Boys and girls, they're equal. There's another book coming out very soon called The Last City on Earth, and it is picking right up where this book left off. So please stay tuned, because I plan on doing this for that book as well. And for all of you who persevered and listened to all of my reading of my book, I want to thank you for taking the journey with me. And because it's now preserved on YouTube and in digital form, it'll be around a lot longer than I will be. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all go to your own imagined universes from time to time and check in on those people you created years ago when you slept, when you dreamed. Thanks, and goodbye.